I'm your host of the Most Local 23. You're joining me for the Silent Twin Chapter 1. Carolyn Mitchell is a USA Today bestselling author. She is a former police detective who has worked in SID and specialized in roles dealing with vulnerable victims, high risk victims of domestic abuse, and serious sexual offenses. She now writes full time and is an international number one digital bestseller with over half a million copies sold. Caroline Mitchell. Hey, I like to toot my own horn, too. <laughs> Dear Diary, I wanted to hurt myself today. To slice through my skin and watch the life flow out of me in a river of madness. It's my madness. It's why my mother nicknamed me Jekyll and Hyde. Being Jekyll and Hyde isn't such a terrible thing. Because if I have a separate identity, then the bad thing happened to me. To my alter ego, not me. And I don't take my responsibility for what follows. I'll go follow by default name. I'm not one for uh, ponytails and things like that, but let's actually go with the brunette hair. My style is great. Let's go. Okay, we got casual look, professional look, stylish look. I like the professional look. Now we'll go with casual. The long and posing track to Blackwater Farm winds like a snake through desolate marshlands. Seven hours since the girl went missing. The countryside consists of dips and hollows which give the wind a howling quality. Abigail Duncan, nine years old. To your ears, the wind sounds like the mournful wailing of a woman somewhere in the distance. No witnesses to her disappearance. You drive past woodlands bordering a river. She's out there somewhere, lost and scared. You navigate down the dirt track leading to the farm, gravel crunching underneath your wheels. That's if she's still alive. You arrive at the farm. So this is Blackwater Farm. You look at the stone farmhouse before you. It looks like it's seen better days. The only sound in the wind is the wind whistling through the outbuildings, and a loose sheet of galvanized metal flapping against a wall somewhere. Creepy place, and I don't just mean the appearance. Now I understand why Sue asked to be transferred off this investigation. Anger and despair permeate the air here. You walk across the foot-worn flagstones as you approach the farmhouse, and glimpse a small girl in an upstairs window as you get closer. That must be Olivia, the missing girl's sister. You smile and give her a friendly wave. The child shows no emotion as she steps away from the window. Poor kid. She must be distraught, alone without her twin. I dread to imagine what state the parents will be in. You sigh at the prospect of the task ahead of you. I can't get emotionally involved here. At least I can't give that impression. Act as a go-between. Update the family, observe, and gather what information I can. That's all I'm here to do. But crimes against children get under my skin every time. You take a breath to strengthen yourself. That's why I could never join the child abuse investigation team. You knock on the front door. It's been seven hours since Abigail went missing. Ethan doubts we'll find her alive. God, I hope he's wrong. The door opens. You steal yourself as you hold up your worn card. Hello, I'm DC Jennifer Knight. I'm Joanna. The pretty blonde woman before you looks anything but distraught. Quite the opposite, in fact. Miss Duncan? Can this happy, smiling woman really be the missing child's mother? I prefer Joanna. Please, come in. We've been expecting you. You enter the house. It takes a moment for your eyes to adjust to the darker interior. The heavy door creaks shut behind you. The whistling wind is reduced to a hush squeal as it pushes through the cracks. This way. You follow Joanna down the dark hall. It feels like a long, narrow cave. The floral scent of oil burners doesn't quite mask the smell of damp plasterboard. Otherworldly whispers stream into your consciousness the further you go in. I wish I had a better idea of how to handle these extrasensory abilities. I can hardly hear myself think. The air of anger and despair is so much stronger in here. This place has a history, a very unpleasant one. I understand how, now, why they pass this up case to the Operation Moonlight. There's definitely a supernatural element at play here. 
You'll have to forgive us the state we're in. Her words wrench you back to reality. Poor woman. Wasn't she just smiling and happy just two seconds ago? It's only natural for her emotions to be all over the place at a time like this. It's completely understandable, miss. We've been meaning to update the drab decor for quite some time. Oh, and I was thinking she meant because of her missing child. I'll take you to see my husband. Hmm, she doesn't seem at all phased. Not so much as a mascara streak inside. Come to think of it, she looks like dressed to impress. You hear floorboards creak overhead. That must be Olivia. I should really be questioning her first. Miss Duncan, I want to speak with Olivia. I'd really like to speak with Olivia first, if I could. I'm afraid that's not possible. Olivia hasn't spoken a word since her sister's disappearance. I'd like to see her all the same. All in good time. Joanna leads you into the kitchen. You're surprised by the throng of people milling around. I had no idea there'd be so many people here. If it weren't for all the muddy boots and duffel coats, I'd think this was a social gathering. You pick out someone you recognize. Karen Corbett, the latest addition to Nick's team at Lexton CID. Good to see Nick's colleague showing support at a time like this. The man she's with looks you over. Hmm, never seen him before. Someone nudges by you. Excuse me, sorry. The dark-haired woman busies herself around the kitchen, handing out cups of tea. You feel a pair of eyes boring into you. You turn to see a tall, middle-aged man standing in his own corner. He gives you a mistrustful stare. He looks friendly. Miss Duncan, can you... Let's go with man. That man's staring at me. Who is he? That's Charles. Charles Radcliffe. He's been helping out on the farm. He flicks the remnants of his tea into the sink. Why do I feel like I've seen him's face before? I was not from some sort of past arrest. He pulls up his hood and leaves. And the rest of these people? These people are friends and family. It's good you have people to support you during this time. Oh yes, they've been out searching all morning. Fiona too, even though it's not really a housekeeper's job description. She says that so casually, like they were help they were helping her search for a lost earring. Trying to lead you over to her husband. He looks lost in deep, troubling thought. Nick, this is Nick practically jumps out of his chair as he grabs her hand with a firm, clammy grip. DC Knight, have you any news? Sorry, nothing as of yet. Nick's gaze drops to the floor, his eyebrows dragging his furrowed brow. This is the kind of reaction I expect of a grieving parent. He looks like he's barely keeping it together. What a contrast he is to his wife. As soon as I hear anything, you'll be the first to know, and please call me Jennifer. He looks over at Joanna as she refills a cup of tea. Is she actually humming? Something isn't right here. You return your attention to Nick. I know you've already given statements, but could you tell me the events of this morning again? Nick sighs deeply. Like I told your colleague, I... Are you a tea or a coffee drinker? Joanna startles you with her question. Uh, I prefer coffee. Fine, thanks. And would you like a pastry? What pills are you doped up on? Unless you're a psychopath, that's the only other explanation. Uh, Joanna. I drove into Haven this morning, especially. You must try one. Take your pastry and shove them up your at while I look for your little girl, okay? She went out to buy pastries only hours after her daughter's disappearance. I'm fine, thank you. Well, if you change your... Johanna! Yes, darling? Go take your pills, or whatever the you're on. Nick shakes his head. The kitchen window abruptly bursts open. A cold gust of air gives you goosebumps. Goodness. Vienna rushes to shut the window. For a, for a nine-year-old girl to be out somewhere in this. I'm starting to think Ethan might be right. You turn back to Nick, but he's no longer there. You catch him leaving the kitchen through the hall. Mm. How many sugars did you, did you say you take? Her voice draws your attention. Joanna's holding a cup of steaming liquid. I didn't. Is there somewhere you and I can talk? Oh, 
Oh, of course. Let's go to the living room. Aviona, please be sure to hand out the pastries. Oh my god. Yes, Miss Duncan. Joanna leads you out into the kitchen and into the hall. The ceiling creaks overhead as you pass through the hall, sending a shiver up your spine. Old houses like this, houses with dark past, they don't settle. They carry a life of their own. The atmosphere in this house feels thick and heavy. The longer I stay, the more I feel it weighing on me. This house is the kind of place that could never be a home. The best you can hope to do is coexist with its ghost. <laughs> hmm, been there. Joanna leads you into the living room. This room feels the most oppressive of all so far. It takes you a moment to acc uh, acclimatize yourself to the le leaden atmosphere. Joanna takes a seat. She gestures to the chair opposite. Please. You take a seat. She's acting strangely. What gives you that impression? Should I comfort her or confront her about it? No, stick to the facts of the case. Joanna, should I be concerned about Nick? He's worried sick, of course, but Nick's strong. Looked to me like he was barely holding himself together. Mm, he just wants his daughter home safe. His daughter? Not our daughter? We all do. Oh, of course, of course we do. All of us. I'd like you to recount the events of this morning as you experience them. But I've told the other officers so many times. Oh, is it troubling you to recall the events of this morning? I appreciate that, but if you could tell me, that would be very helpful. She sighs as if in one more inconvenience to her already ruined day. Well, it was just after breakfast. It had been raining. The twins were going stir-crazy inside. As soon as the sun peaked, they begged me to let them out to play. So I relented and told them to go outside. She runs these details off in a cold, robotic fashion. Do they often play outside? Joanna nods as she sit, takes a sip of her tea. It's not much fun for them inside due to the renovation work we're having done. It makes a lot of the rooms no-go areas. They like to play hide-and-seek, you see. It's their favorite game. Oh, not this shit again. I'm serious. She looks off to the side, lost in thought. You're surprised by the tenderness in her voice. This is a side of Johanna I haven't seen yet. It doesn't matter where they hide. They'd always find each other. They had an inseparable bond. I promised the girls a pony as a reward for putting up with the move. She comes back to herself, her cold tone returning. We do place strict limitations on where they can and can't go. I told them Daddy was working out in the cow shed. And told them not to go any further than the hen house. The ceiling overhead creaks again, sending a shiver up your spine. There's definitely a supernatural presence in this house. I'll ignore it. For now. Miss Duncan, was that the last time you saw Abigail? Joanna looks off to the side again. Miss Duncan? She frowns at some unseen thing or thought. But Johanna? She snaps her eyes back to you with a manic smile. Hmm? I asked if that was the last time you saw Abigail. She doesn't say yes, only nods, a smile lingering on her face. Can anyone confirm your story? Am I under suspicion? I'm just trying to gather the facts. Jonna doesn't seem convinced by your answer. Fiona, she was with me in the kitchen. At what point did you realize something was wrong? Well, once I realized the girls had been out for quite some time, I went to check on them. I opened the door and Olivia came rushing into my arms crying. Mm. Was she still speaking at this point? No, she's always been the quiet one of the two, but she wouldn't say anything. I asked her where Abby was, and she just shrugged. I asked if she saw her go off with anyone. She shook her head no. I remember she looked frightened. I asked if something was scaring her, but she didn't answer. And what would she been have scared of? I don't know. Perhaps because they laid farther out than they were allowed. Did Olivia communicate anything else to you? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, stop. Hint number one. 
She said, played further out than they are usually allowed. How would you know that if you were in the house? Secondly, if she was non-speaking, how would you know that? I'm just saying. Sherlock Holmes is on the case. All I could get from her was that Abigail had hid somewhere and she couldn't find her. What happened after that? Nick and Fiona searched the barns and sheds while I stayed with Olivia. After an hour or so, they came back empty-handed, so that's when we called the police. Joanna takes another sip of her tea before smiling at you. That about covers it. You hear a smashing sound coming from the kitchen, followed by a scream. What on earth? You and Joanna rush to the kitchen. Several cups of tea lie broken on the floor. Fiona's cleaning up the mess. What happened? They just flew right off the counter. You look to the side and see Olivia staring back at you. Her face looks haunted and pale. There's more going on here than just a missing girl. A lot more. Hmm. Yes, a lot more than a missing girl. Congratulations, you completed the first chapter. Yes. <laughs> so it looks like there is... Two, three, four, five. Four more chapters to go. With that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy this. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. In the description below, links to social media, our Discord, and if you like to support me and my content. Also, our Twitch channel. Please feel free to like, or excuse me, follow me on there. I do streams quite often as of late, and I plan to do even more here in the future with a lot of new content that you guys may or may not even have access to. Um, also, if you do hit that subscribe or already subscribe, make sure to hit that bell so you'll receive notifications on any and all content that I do upload on YouTube. And without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.